Right. So what have you not done well? You alluded to things that you might do better. What, what have you not done well? Uh, you mean what has the company not done? Well, I don't mean you personally, unless you want to get confessional on me, that's fine. But I'm really, I'm really I, referring to the company. I, good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to you in a second. Well, but I, let's stay with the I, th I think in some ways the uh, we haven't done as good a job as we'd like to on creating that value. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have to compete with people like Trader Joe's, where as a competitor that the market sees them as less expensive mm -hmm. and even though we've gone in and matched all their prices they're right. still perceived to be less expensive so I think we could have done a better job on the value I wish we'd taken that more seriously mm -hmm. earlier yeah uh, I don't think we've done as great a job as we could and um, um, I think we're doing better but I, in some ways now with like our meat departments we've we're evolving that with our five-step animal welfare program our 100% grass-fed beef, but I think we were slow to that. That was one of the gifts Michael Pollan gave to us when he critiqued us a few years ago. Yeah, it was really kind of was a wake-up call to get more serious mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, the animal foods that we sell. Feels to. like the kind of thing you would have gotten to on your own. That, that feels like a very Whole Foodsy kind of value. So it took you that much time to get well, to it. It's like anything, you can get complacent because you've been successful. You can, yep. you can begin to get a little bit complacent. And I think in that area we had gotten a little bit complacent. It took a good knock over the head right. to uh, move us along. What, what is the thing that's on the drawing board now? What's the next big thing, whether it's more prepared food or different kinds of prepared food? What, do, what are you working on now that you can give us a preview of that would help us understand what Whole Foods looks like in two years or three years or five years? Well, we're working on a ton of stuff, but I'll tell you one thing we're really excited about. Yeah. Uh, we've uh, About a year ago, we started our Health Starts Here initiative. So we're really trying to educate our customers about healthy eating. Mm -hmm. It's uh, We've discovered that we've always sold healthy food, but we found that just providing it sometimes isn't enough, that people don't, they don't always, they're not making always healthy choices. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to, uh, to help educate them to raise their consciousness. And one of the initiatives we're going to be beginning right now is we're going to create Whole Foods Market Wellness Clubs. And we're going to do this in five prototype stores, one in New York, one in Boston, one in Chicago, right. one in Oakland, and one in Princeton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And those wellness clubs will have education involved. They will also offer uh, a discount card on our healthiest foods to the members of the club. So they could get 10% off on all their produce. Right on their bulk foods, on our Health Starts Here items. So we're going to try to create education and incentives for people to eat healthier. Mm -hmm. We think it's going to be a revolution, and we're very excited about but, it. But it's not going to be the kind of thing where people feel like they're being hectored, you know, they're being criticized mm -hmm. for the way they eat. It's more just an encouragement. Well, we're going to educate, and then we're going to... Create an incentive. Give, and we're going to give incentives. We're not going to right. hector. Yeah, that's not good for that's business. That's not really your style. I found hectoring is very bad. You think that's a bad thing, actually? It is. You're, you're anti-hector. We don't want to uh, hector people. Okay. Let me, let me ask about... A, a, me, about yeah. Frequently, the media hectors us, but oh, we don't, we don't want to go. hector our customers. Here, here you go again. Okay. Well, I feel less bad about asking this then. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me ask you, in seriousness, a couple things about your uh, philosophy of, uh, of corporate governance and some of the things that you've done as CEO. You, you, you know, of course, that a couple years ago, there was a small firestorm over an op-ed that you wrote for the Wall Street Journal. I figured you were probably going to hector me about that. Oh, no, I'm, I am also anti-hector. Um, in which you, you began, I thought, very instantly with a quote from Margaret Thatcher that mm -hmm. said, the problem with socialism is that you eventually run out of other people's money. And mm -hmm. you went on to say that you believe that attempts to, uh, to reform health care, which at that time were nascent, now, of course, we've seen the mm -hmm. consequences of the work of the last two years, you were not a fan of this, and you thought there were other solutions that were maybe market-based, maybe is the mm -hmm. best way to characterize them. Um, Let's talk about that. Why did you feel a need to, to speak out on or against uh, the proposal to reform health care at that time? Do you think in the last two years that had you uh, the chance to do it over again, you would have said something different? And what do you think about the conversation about health care now? Huh. Um, I mean, we have one minute. Just, no, just, just, <laughs> just kidding. I'm for health care. Okay, good. Thank you. No, we, I'd like to hear what you have to say about this. Uh, well... One of the great learnings I got from that was that uh, it's impossible to separate my own personal views from views the company might have. And this right. was a, I didn't understand that until as a result of the uh, op-ed piece that, that anything I wrote, even though it was just my own personal opinions, right. was going to be assumed that that was sort of Whole Foods' official position. I've since learned that uh, uh, I have to, anything I do and say, I am kind of like a role model for, 
for Whole Foods. And uh, I have to be very careful mm -hmm. in everything I say in a public way, right. because it could reflect on the company. Right. So that was a big takeaway for me. So right. don't expect any more op-ed pieces. You're done, your your op-ed career is over. But, pretty, the, but the substance of it, you believed then, and I'm assuming believe now? You don't have any regret about what you said? There were two things that I, I think I made two important points in that op-ed piece that yeah. um, I, I, I'm going to underscore I still really believe. Yeah. I really do believe that, that we need to get more competition in, uh, in the healthcare arena. I do not see a, a competitive marketplace. We don't have, you can't, insurance, you can't buy it across state lines. You've got a very heavily regulated area mm -hmm. that's just getting more and more expensive because we're not really allowing entrepreneurs and creative competition to result. Yeah. I really think that's a mistake. And I don't see anything in the current healthcare reform that's going to result in lowered costs. And you're confident that the market, if left to its own devices, would do right by people who have truly no power against... Uh... That's kind of a loaded question. There. Sure it is. <laughs> but I asked it. Um, well, knock it, if it's loaded, knock it down easily. Tell me if you think that, that the market will... We'll, I mean, we'll you can have problem. market solutions. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to look at like what Switzerland's doing, you have a completely private uh, insurance market, and then you have the government do a voucher type program for people that uh, are less affluent. So right. everybody get you have universal coverage, and yet you have a competitive marketplace. Yeah. Something like that, what Switzerland does, would probably be very appropriate for the United States as well. Right. But the other point that I made in, that, in, the, uh, in the essay mm -hmm. that I think is very important is, is that I really feel like the argument about health care reform is mostly about who's going to pay for it. And it's not really getting to the roots of what's wrong with health care in America. Which is? Which is, these are mostly lifestyle diseases that mm -hmm. we are, that we're, we, I mean, 67% of Americans are overweight, 35% right. are obese. We, our lifestyles are killing us. Right. And deciding who's going to pay for things mm -hmm. doesn't really solve the problem. But if I, but if I grant you that, mm -hmm. you still can't wish away the reality. The reality is we do have people in this country who are ailing. Yes. And it may be because of their bad choices. It may be because of other things. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, what do you do? Just basically scrape the lot and start over? I mean, you've got to somehow deal with the people who are ailing out there now, don't you? Yes, you do. So it's just a question of what's the best way to deal with it. And that comes back to your first point, which is market-based solutions. Well, market-based solutions work for most of the areas of our lives. Right. And I believe if we haven't tried market-based solutions in health care, and if the real issue is getting universal health care, making sure nobody's falls through the safety net, there are better ways to do it than the way we're doing it right now. So you, you oppose what passed uh, Congress last year, and which is on the verge of being implemented despite efforts to... I'm sticking with my essay. Yeah. I haven't changed my mind haven't about changed that. haven't changed your mind. So you, you can draw your conclusions. You had boycotts, or, or threatened boycott at a minimum, of Whole Foods well, as a result did have, of this. We did have boycotts. And this gets back to your notion of when I speak, I speak for the company. When I speak, people think I Perce speak for the company. Perceive it. So yeah. because perception's reality, yeah. I can't do that anymore. 